Hi, I'm Bill Nelson, a medical oncologist, cancer researcher, and director of the Sydney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center at Johns Hopkins. All cancers are fundamentally disorders of genes and gene function. The genes are the blueprints for all the components of all the cells and the tissues in the body. And when these components become defective, cancer cells grow throughout the body, overwhelming organs and organ function, ultimately threatening life. When the genes themselves are broken, we call that cancer genetics. When the gene function has been corrupted, we call that cancer epigenetics. Cancer epigenetics has taken center stage in the cancer world. Thus far in this series, as we've tried to delve into sophisticated ideas and concepts, we've used this toy box. But I thought it would be better to use a different kind of box, this baton box. Let me show you why. A stage is a perfect place to learn about cancer epigenetics. Genes are a lot like musical instruments. When they play together, you can make beautiful music. Researchers believe that hundreds of genes in cancer cells may be intact, but they may not be working correctly. In this case, they're like musical instruments that are not playing together in a piece of music. What's needed is a conductor. Here at the Goodwin Auditorium of the Peabody Conservatory of Johns Hopkins University, we have some of the world's great musicians to help us learn about cancer epigenetics. So let's welcome a string quartet to the stage. Two violins, a viola and a cello, and me, your conductor. An ensemble like this is a great illustration of epigenetic alterations in cancers. These change the way genes act in the same way a conductor controls the way the instruments play. Without leadership, without a conductor, the musicians can't play in a coordinated way. Much the same way cancer cells with epigenetic defects, the genes don't function in a coordinated way, leading the cancer cell to grow chaotically throughout the body, threatening life itself. Without a conductor, the musicians would play at the wrong speed, the wrong meter. They'd play the wrong parts, the wrong notes. It would be as if I, the conductor, just walked away. Essentially, all aspects of cancer cell function can be affected when there's no conductor. There's nothing coordinating the proper action of the genes. New cancer epigenetic drugs have the ability to restore a conductor. One of the epigenetic defects we've learned about at Johns Hopkins is a phenomenon of gene silencing. This would be as if this string quartet were playing without its first violin. Remarkably, an epigenetically silenced gene is intact. It would be as if the first violin could still play her part. One of the great exciting new opportunities going forward is that we now have new drugs that can restore the function of silenced genes it would be as if we invited the first violinist back into the ensemble. There are hundreds of genes epigenetically silenced like this in most cancer cells. Today we're learning about new ways to restore the function of all of them at once and do it in safe and effective ways that may create new cancer treatments, just like bringing together an entire symphony orchestra. So we're building new treatments, new diagnostic tests, exploiting cancer epigenetics in a crescendo of activity that should be music to everyone's ears.